Hey, I need you. I'm here. You're going to intro Brian Sumatros from the Tossing Salad podcast. That's what we're running this week. Oh, Are you aware of this? I was aware. Okay, good. You read the notes. I wrote the notes. <laughs> Very good. Uh, so we are in Guilford, Connecticut, right? Absolutely. And we're having a good time here, obviously, checking out winter in your little winter wonderland, your Shangri-La in Connecticut. Nobody's ever used those words together in the sentence before. I think you're accurate. I don't think I've heard Shangri-La in Connecticut, but it is kind of a Shangri-La. Yep. So while Denise is figuring out whether or not she can survive in winter weather, and while we were prepping all the other episodes that are from the cities and towns we hit along the way up to Connecticut. We have a great presentation for you this week, an interview we did with our new friend of the show, Brian Samatros from the Tossing Salad podcast. This is going to be a great show. I laughed from beginning to end. He's so conversational. When we get talking with Brian, time just flies. So hopefully this episode will fly for you as quickly as it did for us. That's right. So, ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, Brian Sumatros, Tossing Salad Podcast. Check the mic and make sure it sounds right, boys. Hey, listeners, ever wonder what it would be like to blow up your comfort zone at the tender age of 50? Well, we did just that. When our last kid went off to college, we hit the road in search of a new hometown. Now we bounce from city to city and bring you along for the ride. This is the Skip Town All-Stars podcast. What's up, All-Stars? We are really happy today to have in the studio with us Brian Simatros from the Tossing Salad podcast. For those of you who are keeping score, we were actually guests on his show uh, a few weeks back, and we are super excited to be returning the favor today. We can't wait to get into it. Say hello, Brian. Well, I'll tell you, uh, well, first of all, thank you for having me on your show. That was my favorite show that I've ever done interviewing somebody when you guys nice. came on last Aww. month. And I thought that we had such a great time. Mm -hmm. uh, usually I try to keep my shows within like an hour or so. And I think <laughs> yeah. we went out to like an hour and a half. And I remember James at the end, he was like, you know what? If you need to edit stuff down, I'm totally cool with that or whatever. Yeah. And I'm like... I went through and started to edit, and I was like, you know what? Um, I'm going to keep kind of everything in there. I, I took a, a few things out, but a lot yeah. of the things that we talked about was just gold for podcasters. Yeah. It, it was, and it's funny because leading up to your podcast all week, he has been saying probably once a day, we're keeping it to an hour, Denise. We're keep and I said to him, I don't know how we're gonna do that. It's so much fun. Well, I, that's it is what so I said much to him. Fun, I'm like, I, know I don't know. <laughs> if it goes beyond an hour, we're talking about ourselves again instead of you. Right. And uh, we're not doing because that. Because you did us such a solid on your show and just let us ramble on about ourselves. It's your turn. You're in the hot seat today. So we have questions for you. Cannot wait to get some of the answers and uh here we go. I feel yeah, I good that I don't have any of the pressure on me. I know Denise <laughs> on when we were talking, Denise was like, yeah, you know, I'd rather guest on a show because I don't have to worry about the stuff. Yeah. And I usually I was thinking about that. I was like, when I have guested on shows before and it hasn't been a lot, I do get nervous because I want to be a good guest. I want to yeah. be interesting. You know, I want you guys to have a good show. But I feel like this morning, like I was running down the stairs. I just took a shower. I, I I got the beard waxed and oiled, and I yeah. and as I was doing this, I was like, I feel like I'm going on a date with you two this morning. <laughs> Who gets the first kiss? Uh, well, we're gonna have to find out. We're gonna have to find out. <laughs> okay. Oh, okay. I was pointing to you. People, people are gonna wonder because of the thumbnail that I yes. made. Yes. Yeah. I you know, know, right? James and Denise were kind of there with one of their pictures. I don't know where you guys were at, but I think James was kind of bear hugging Denise. And then I just yep. kind of photoshopped myself behind it James, almost genius. kind of bear hugging him. So Yeah, it was awesome. I saw that. When you posted it, I could not stop laughing. I think I ran from like the living room to James's office and I said, did you see the thumbnail that Brian made? It was hysterical. It was. It was. <laughs> you don't want to thruple up with us. We're a handful, dude. You, you can do You could do much better in terms of a nice, peaceful relationship <laughs> than than to match yourself up with us. You guys are into a lot of stuff. I, I know that I cannot keep up with you guys as far as the travel. <laughs> 
<laughs> and I do recognize, okay, where are you guys at right now? Because I, I recognize this place that you guys are in. Yep. Brian, I think this is going to be the last time you see it. Yeah. So we're not going to talk about ourselves, but we are going to say that we are recording right now from our Florida home, but this will be probably the last recording because we are going to start recording from a podcast studio that we found in Orlando. Yeah. Oh, for the time that we're in Florida, time. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> for, for the time that we're ever in Florida, we found our, a home. And then uh, if anybody's been following along, you know, we're sort of zoning in on the New England region, specifically Connecticut. So uh, we are also, you know, when we're there or it doesn't matter if we're traveling to Milwaukee for crying out loud, we're just going to look for, for a studio from now on. We're not traveling with the camera bags and the tripods and all that stuff anymore, man. Those days are over. Yeah, but we so. are currently in Florida. But this yeah. is about you, and we are not talking about us anymore. That's right. Okay. Enough's enough on that. I Brian. can't help it. I keep deflecting back <laughs> to you guys. I know. I know. Let's so. tell our audience a little bit about who you are, what you do, how you started on social media. I want mm -hmm. everyone to know, because there is a reason why your podcast is called Tossing Salad Podcast. It is a play on words of some sorts, but it's also legitimately uh, references back to what you first did on social media years ago. I mean, you were OG when you started. So tell everyone that's listening who you are. Well, I mean, basically, you know, I'm coming from a gardening background. That was my big hobby for the last almost 10 years, back to 2014. Mm -hmm. When I started gardening um, on social media, let's say, to where you know you get on there and then you post ridiculous amounts of pictures of a tomato, of an eggplant, to a community that when they see the emoji of an eggplant, they know that's an eggplant and not something else, right? Yeah. Right. <laughs> so... I started there and kind of built up this gardening community. It was fun. And I did it primarily, not necessarily to, uh, you know, grow organic food, um, right. to not use, you know, miracle Grow and all that stuff. Gardening for me online was kind of therapy on and working on personal issues that I had. Um, or that I have been struggling with for my, my entire life, whether it was stress, high blood pressure, uh, you know, I'm an introvert. I hate dealing with people. Um, I hate being around people physically. And um, it, it's something to where it almost kind of forced me to work on certain things. And it was it was it was out of necessity. Right. So by creating and and starting this gardening channel on Instagram, on TikTok, on YouTube, I'm the Garden Voyeur over there. By the way, I guess I should plug it. Although yep, now, absolutely, I absolutely. feel I feel like I'm done with that. Is do that you? Right? Yeah. Okay, are you done with the social media part, Brian, or you actually don't garden anymore? Uh, great question, Denise. I think I I think I'm done with how I was using social media and the gardening because it it. The last few years, it's gotten away from the therapeutic part of it. And I was oh. a gardening performer on social media. Right. And it wasn't producing the results that I wanted it to do internally for me, for the therapy, mm -hmm. if we go back to the therapy part. Right. And I kind of want to just get back to where I can go out to the garden detached from everything and not worry about taking the phone, phone, the tripod, a mic, you know? Yeah. And then, okay, well, what time of day is it? Are my neighbors mowing their lawn as right. I'm making these clips? And it just, it got to be another job that I started to resent and hate. Ooh. And that's for two years. And I don't know, James, if you can kind of, because I think you're kind of a little bit with a technical background of, yeah. of you know, like setting up all the camera stuff or whatever. And I'm not quite sure what you do for your job, which I'd love yeah. to get into at some point. Yeah. For me, I'm a photographer. I have my own company that does photography, kind of content for local companies. Okay. And after a while, I don't, I don't want to play with my cameras anymore because mm. that's my job. Right. I know. Yeah, totally. I don't, I don't want to do... So the gardening part over the course of the nine or 10 years that I've been doing it for social media and I've been, I feel like I've been bitching and complaining to my garden friends. I'm just, I'm kind of done with it. 
but I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm sick of listening to myself say that. Right. So I have really tapered back on the gardening portion of it. Um, not only physically gardening, but the social media. But I think I've only made uh, five posts in the last couple months on all the social media accounts for gardening. Right. And I, I, I don't miss it. I, I am totally into creating something new right now with whatever this podcasting mm -hmm. uh, show stuff, whatever doors open up from this going forward. I don't know where I'm going, but I am crafting skills of being a host and interviewing people or being a guest uh, on the skip town all stars and setting up a camera for recording, using StreamYard, having a microphone, and just kind of talking about whatever. And when I was trying to come up with a name for whatever it is that I was wanting to do, Denise, mm -hmm. this is where I kind of come back around to answer that yeah. question of, why would you come up with the name Tossing Salad Podcast? I, because of Well, all I the know the reason, because you told us on the, when we were right. on yours. I, I had a note list of 50 different names of what I wanted to call a show that it, it, it was almost kind of a variety show because I didn't know necessarily what I wanted to do just yet. Right. And all 50 of them were, were very vanilla kind of traditional. <laughs> and I'm just like, and that's nothing of what I'm about or what I do. Mm -hmm. Um, it doesn't hit my sense of humor. Um, you know, everything that I kind of do for the most part, there's always a little sense of humor thrown in there, a lot of self-deprecation uh, for people that really know me. And I looked through those 50 names and I was like, I mean, they're they're good names for people that are starting podcasts and whatever. But I'm like, Bruh. you know, I don't, you weren't feeling it. I wasn't feeling it. And just I was. <laughs> Always in the back of my head, I'm like, this is like a virtual toss salad of topics that I want to do. Mm -hmm. And of course, I know what most of us, I guess, have associated with a toss salad, thanks to right. what was it, Oprah or something? Chris, Chris Rock. Rock. Or Chris, Chris Rock. Rock. Yeah, that's right. It was a Chris Rock joke. You know, yeah. not yeah. everyone, Brian, because I just had to explain it to one of our listeners last week. Oh, did you? And then I ruined it. She said, I will never look at a toss salad the same way. Yeah, so and I was really I felt bad. I was like, oh, I don't want to do that for you. So there are there are people that have that associated with it. And I struggled because I was like, I think it's hilarious and funny. Yeah. One, there's a well, on top of the the sense of humor of that, if if you can think about that in terms of uh my type of sense of humor, but there's an actual uh, it's a way to kind of on the forefront, get rid of certain listeners <laughs> or a certain type of person that will not like my sense of humor. Mm -hmm. That's an easy way at the front end to be like, I'm not going to listen to this. Yeah. Now there might be some false positives that'll, that are going to get flagged of people that would like me, but they're like, I'm not I'm not listening to a podcast called Tossing Salad because they're thinking that it's something. <laughs> right. Yeah. Whatever Everybody's it mind is. is in the gutter. Sure. Um, but for the ones that can get past that initial layer and be like, oh, my God, he was able to tie in his past with gardening mm -hmm. and the uh, vegetable medley of topics that he talks about, whether it's. U.S. men's national team or my Katy Perry records that just came in or we're getting into Taylor Swift. Um, it, it's it's literally a a virtual medley of topics that yeah. I'm interested in talking about. It's not going to appeal to a lot of people, but that's OK, because there should be enough people out there in the world eventually mm -hmm. we talked about this yeah. yeah to where they get us individually whether it's the two of you or it's me they have the same sense of humor they're not yeah. going to be offended by the name of it and we're going to have a good time in the long run and the trick is do we have enough fortitude within us to last 
of what could be one, two, three years of, of podcasting, doing this and finding those people because yeah. man, I'm telling and you guys know it is brutal out there. There's a lot to weed through. A lot of people as of 2020 specifically started during the pandemic and you know, now, like you said, it's a matter of just trying to outlast them. So tell us a little bit about your, you know, your outlook, your strategy for that. How are you keeping yourself sane while attempting to do that? <laughs> it depends on what time is it? It's uh, 10, <laughs> 10, 20 right now. And my strategy and my, my outlook on social media, podcasting, the show, what I want to do, it changes by the hour. It's, yeah. it's a tough thing. I mean, on top of just the creative portion of doing a show, what are you going to do it on? Again, this is all stuff that you guys go through as well, which is why I love that the fact that I found people like you. The creative part is tough. It is. Um, it is. Dealing with uh, negative trolls online because we're opening ourselves up right absolutely yeah we're showing our faces our voices we're opening up our thoughts yeah and you know being as honest as we can for mm -hmm. anybody that wants to see and then there's people that are out there that and unfortunately there's a lot of them and they're the most vocal and the loudest <laughs> they are they are but they get a hard on out of saying something crappy just trying to upset the apple cart just yep. to be just to have some effect on somebody whether it's positive or negative they don't care right they just want to have an effect they want to matter in life and that's what i've kind of found with a lot of these people that are just so negative online or just even people that we deal with yeah. uh in real life that we work with that are our friends or family too. Oh, yeah. Let's not, yeah, we've talked let's about not say this. that yeah. that's not uh, happening there. Right. Yeah. Some people don't, they feel like they don't matter. And so one way they can affect some kind of change or affect somebody else is behind a keyboard and a monitor and write whatever. And once you respond or once they get you and it's hard to ignore all of them. It is. It absolutely is. But once they see that they got you and that you're giving them, they're giving them a nugget of something, that makes their day. And it, it's negative energy, but it makes their day. Yeah, I was going to say, I mean, there is a dopamine hit that they get when you actually reply to one of their drive-bys. I remember we got our first troll and I jumped up and down and I ran. I <laughs> we go, were excited. We got our so, first troll. I like, think that's coming, awesome. Like, yeah. that means we've made it. So, Brian, you've made it. <laughs> yeah, you've made it. That's the thing. But I, I'd a still lot hurtful. of people it's that still... are wanting to do more on social media and, and they're they're really concerned with the numbers and, and wanting to get out there and have more people see their stuff, they they don't necessarily take into account that that also means you're opening yourself up to even more yeah. negative comments. It's true. And, you know, I go back to, we touched on it a little bit on, on the show that you guys did with me last uh, last month. I asked you guys, why the hell are you guys starting this podcast when you're right at 50? You guys, have, yeah. the kids are gone. You guys, have, why open yourselves up to that? But for me, the answer why I'm doing it is because I want to. And yeah. I can. Yep. Right. And Brian, we did a little research. We dug, we dug in, pulled some numbers. You are top 10% of podcasts worldwide. Did you know that? I I have no idea what that number could be. And there's it's interesting, yeah. but yeah. So well, you that has should has to make you feel like you all the work you put in. I mean, top 10% of podcasts worldwide, like that's pretty impressive. Yeah. So I think uh, the the metrics have to deal with not just duration, like how long you've been in the game and all that, but really, you know, Who's impressions, listening? all sorts of uh, there are all sorts of variation variables that they factor into that number. But uh, we were Googling a handful of them last night and uh, we started with yours and we were like, oh, look at Brian. He's doing all right. Yeah. So, so when people are asking you about your, you know, your little podcast hobby, tell them I'm top 10 percent podcast yeah. worldwide. Eat that. Just tell them we're number 10. I, I don't even like people <laughs> was like my mom was up here for 
she's she's go- going on a worldwide trip with my brother for her uh, retirement or whatever. Mm-hmm. And it's I dread. I'm curious to, to to hear what you guys think. Also, when people that you know in real life find out that you guys are doing a podcast, like I know the word is getting out to the people that I know in real life. Uh-huh. Which this is real life too. Like I I I can't touch you guys, but you guys are real life. I consider you guys friends, and I just met you Absolutely. guys. Really, yes, yeah, totally. Um, but I was dreading having her come up because I knew at some point she's she's, she's going to in in the mom tone. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that we all have kind of grown up with to where you just mm-hmm. know that the person that has been around you, whether it's your mom, your dad, your brothers, your sisters, your your own kids, your daughters, in in that particular tone that you're just like, oh, fuck. yeah, it just slices what, you. What's what's this uh, podcast you're doing? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, why, why are you doing this? Brian, I had a career for like 15 years and when we would go home to picnics or whatever to Ohio, my mom would my mom would say it in a tone that felt so demeaning to me and she would say, "Go and tell Aunt Patty what you do again." Right. <laughs> you know? And I'm like, what is it with moms, especially with sons? It's like, "Ma, you you just gutted me in front of everyone." I think it's a power thing or the fact that i think you know we've all watched sopranos and the way tony totally. had to deal with his mom oh my gosh that's a very good analogy look and i heard i heard adam carolla say one time that he called his mom to tell his mom he got a show on comedy central and he was so excited and his mom said you know adam cousin larry just started a plumbing business right yeah. <laughs> it's i can't explain it and i know it's not just all like on her other people i hold my own responsibility on on how my relationships go Mm -hmm. but i'm just i'm being honest in a sense that i just i don't want to have that conversation with people that uh, that are people that i can touch yeah and i know it sounds strange because you're like well anytime somebody asks you about what you're doing don't you want to explain it or don't you want to i said no first of all i don't want first of all i don't want anybody come to my house (laughs) <laughs> because again, <laughs> being an introvert, yeah, you're interrupting my routine, right? And then you know, of course, people that come to your house stay too long, and you're, just, and you're. I look at my wife. I'm like, oh my god, how long is, you know, how long is uh-huh. she supposed to be here? You're waiting yeah. for them to go. You go to the bathroom thirty times, and somebody's there. there. Yeah, you know. Okay, um, so yeah, I, I I need to know really quick. Okay. You are an introvert. You've said this several mm-hmm. times, yeah. but you are so creative and so social um, on social media. You post uh, often. You post funny stuff. Um, how the hell did you meet Amy and have two kids? And do you ever go to parent-teacher conference? Uh, well, uh, let's start backwards from that. Did I ever go to parent-teacher conferences? I did when they were smaller, but I'm going to tell you what. You're looking at the guy that started – the PTO at our school. Wow. What? Yeah. It, it, it doesn't make any sense, but, uh, there was a point in my life to where like things mattered and you want to be involved and do all this stuff and it's for the greater good. I'm going to, that's about as, as positive as I can get. I've gotten way more <laughs> pessimistic and negative as I've gotten older. I'm sure. Uh, I but can't believe you had to deal, with, deal parents. with schools. Yeah, I can't believe parents. you. D- it, but this I was is the crazy. PTO creator president and nervous as hell i hate getting up in front of people but i challenged myself because nobody else was doing it and i was like why can't why can't i do it why can't i organize this and get people and you know bring them in i'm not good at any one specific thing but i'm good at big picture stuff and creating something Mm -hmm. and getting it going so there's that you know, but as That's far as huge. how my wife and I got together and how she uh, procreated with me or whatever to produce <laughs> two kids, I have no idea because uh, she is the opposite of me in terms of personality wise. She is an extrovert. She is outgoing. Everybody loves her. Mm-hmm. Uh, she's just she's a fun person to be around. And I am the exact opposite. I don't know what it was, whether it was she felt bad for the kid in, 
that had this darkness, this dark cloud that Mr. floated Bro- over him. The brooding, Mr. yeah. Yeah, I was going to say Mr. Broody in the background, yeah. She's like, oh, that's the guy for me. But I, I think, <laughs> I, to be honest with you, I think it was a uh, a heightened sense of uh, the, the sense of humor that she kind of got. Mm-hmm. And you would you would have to ask her now, like what? Because I'm sure, like every couple that we've gone out with, or when she goes out with her girlfriends, they're like, what do you see? And like, <laughs> what? How are you two together? Right. How did you guys meet? Was it high school, college, just like blind date on an app? We yeah. um, we met. We worked at the same restaurant in high school. She. I love telling this story because this is where I can say that she's an older woman. She was three years older than I was. Oh, Mm. that is older in high school. Are you kidding? So I was in high school. I was a sophomore, I think, sophomore, junior in that time frame. And I was a bus boy. She was the hostess at the restaurant we worked at. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, she was part of, she was like head cheerleader all this stuff, but she, she went to the, the other high school. Uh huh. Mm. So if we were to go to the same high school, she would have nothing to do with me. Her and her <laughs> sister were like the, what you would consider like at the time, like the popular, popular cheerleaders, yeah. you know, the in crowd, yeah, the in crowd and everything. And then I was, I wasn't in the bottom rung of anything, but I kind of, I was able to associate with every different rung, but I was just on my own. I was, I've always been kind of a lone wolf. Mm -hmm. If we had gone to the same high school, no way would she have anything to do with me and no way would I have anything to do with her. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But we worked at the same restaurant, which I always contend if, uh, you know, most, I, I think society, we would do well if, if, Everyone either had to go to serve in the military or go to a service industry and work in a <laughs> restaurant. Yeah. Just just to know how to how to treat people it's in so general. True. It's yeah. yeah, very true. And uh so that's Denise, where we met. Denise got fired from Outback Steakhouse. So that just I didn't tells get you fired, right I quit, but I wasn't very oh, I didn't quit? get very good tips because I didn't sit and like hang at the table. Like I just was like I I was basically how I like to be treated when I go to a restaurant. Take your order, bring your drinks, bring your food, and leave you alone. Well, when you're working at a place like a chain restaurant at Outback Steakhouse, they want the waitresses to be super friendly, sit in the booth with everyone. Hi, how's your no, that was not me. So I am I ended up quitting. <laughs> so you didn't get fired. <laughs> no, I didn't get fired. I, you I got just, fired. No, I just didn't last very long because I wasn't like getting you would have gotten fired. It does seem like that, but I did not. I just quit because I wasn't making as many tips as like the pretty blondes with the big scrunchies in their hair and you know, the tight shirts. That just wasn't me. But you you see if when you work in the service industry, you see how all sorts of people treat people like that. Yes. Comes all walks of life. Yeah. James and was a Red Lobster waiter forever. I, I worked at Ruby mm-hmm. Tuesdays, Red Lobster. I worked right? at all kinds of uh, bars and even in Florida. I lived in Orlando for two years in the 90s and I worked at a, uh, an ale house there. And uh, Everyone should work in the service industry. Yeah, yes. I agree with you. I mean, you, you just you learn how to interact with people whether you like it or not, but it forces you because your money is kind of dependent on it. Um, interacting with people that you may or may not like or diffusing situations to where somebody doesn't like their food. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You or know, they just want a free meal and they want a free meal or whatever. And you learn mm. a lot of different things. And, you know, that's so that's where my wife and uh, Amy and I met. And I, you know, I watched her date other guys uh classically i mean i've got so many stories to where she was dating a guy that lived down the street from me and so we would leave work at like midnight uh once because again i was the bus boy so i was the the low man on the totem pole so i'm like cleaning bathrooms before i can leave or whatever and she was all you know the the hostess who she thought she was you know higher end Uh Yeah, she was done once the menus were wiped off. Yeah, let let the busboys clean up, you know, everything else. And so I would, I would get home, and then I would see her, her car drive past my house because she's leaving her boyfriend's house at like two in the morning or whatever. And at first, it was the the classic story to where we were kind of just friends, and 
I think she just, she liked having me around because I was funny and different or whatever. And then slowly, uh, you know, she broke up with that guy and it was like two in the morning and there was a tap on my window oh. and she's bawling and crying because she broke up, but she came to me. Mm. And so I was like, I got her. <laughs> you played the long game as James would say. The, the yeah, dark, broody, <laughs> uh, unpopular, unlikable guy got her. Uh huh. So that's right. kind of where it all started. Right. You are. And anybody who listens to your podcast will know you're very measured. You're very rational. And you know what? Uh, you're a steady rock, obviously, for her. So why don't you tell us? Because, you know, we, uh, Denise and I, have really been sort of humbled by the fact that you were able to share her story a little bit, what you guys are going through, and uh, just how open you are with the situation with Amy right now. Is there Are there any updates? Yeah, so... Um, so my wife, Amy, was diagnosed with breast cancer earlier this summer. And the timing of everything was like, there's there's no right time to, to come down with breast cancer, right, mm -hmm. for anybody. Yeah. But for us, it was kind of difficult because one, and I'll start from what should be kind of a lower priority, but it, it's, it all matters to us. Our dog that we've had for 10 years, well, I think he's 11 now, mm -hmm. was just out of the blue diagnosed with cancer and given just a few weeks to live oh my wow. gosh and so i mean that just devastated all of us and mm -hmm. you know we had to go through the whole conversation of uh well the doctor said that if he goes through this certain round of chemo uh he's got a really high chance of surviving and i said well how much is this chemo for dogs yeah uh, five or six thousand dollars and i'm like <laughs> wow yeah. and wow i love my dog mm -hmm. yeah i love my dog but i i was like oh man i is this a battle that i'm gonna want to do with her because i mean one we don't have the money mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. but that kicked everything off and then our oldest uh got into west point and he had just left and we weren't going to see him for I don't know if it was like eight, 10 weeks or something like that to where right. he's, they're doing like summer basic training before the classes start up at West Point. Mm -hmm. And one of the problems was when she was diagnosed and that hit us pretty hard because there's a lot of information we didn't have at the time other than she has this, her two positive cancer. Um, you know, a lot of things start going through your head. Yeah. And our thing was, well, what information are we releasing and who are we telling? The number one issue for us was we couldn't get word really to our son. Oh, right. Of course. So we're not, we couldn't really tell anybody because we were afraid of information somehow getting to him while he's going through this, you know, time up at West Point. And, you know, it's already difficult for these kids going there to where all of a sudden they go from high school senior, big fish yeah. in a small pond. Everything's really super easy for them to basic training wherever they're at out in the field doing stuff. We're like, we, we can't, we can't let anybody know. Right. Wow. I never thought of that. That had yeah. to be difficult for the that. both two of you. And she didn't want, the only way we could get information to him was writing a letter. Mm-hmm. And so she was, she had made this, she's like, I, I, I don't want to write a letter. Yeah. She, I, I've got to tell him. Right. So that was, that was another issue that we had um, kind of going on with, okay, well, how are we going to deal with this? So uh, fast forward a few months and, you know, getting into the chemo treatments and everything with her cancer. And if anybody has had cancer or, family member friend that has it or whatever you know that it just it's something that just takes control of your life and you feel like okay there's nothing there's nothing you can really do other than just go through the treatments and try to survive as much as you can right and with my wife it's very much it, it could be a good day or it could be a bad day uh, but always to the fact that cancer is dictating how you're doing things right. daily. Yeah, of course. So I pitched to her, and I don't know at what point, 
I said, what do you think about just doing a podcast episode on the cancer mm -hmm. and just kind of explaining what you're going through and maybe that will help somebody else that's out there going through it themselves. Yeah. And more importantly, going through it by themselves. Wow, yes. Because there are you, a lot of people doing it alone. Yeah. You take for granted that you that everybody has somebody that's going to help them or take care of them. And what I found was when we go to when we go to do our chemo sessions and I'm sitting there, there are people that are there that there's nobody else there sitting with them. Mm. You know? Yeah. So I I was like, what if would you feel comfortable in in doing that? And again, she's more extroverted and and open about stuff, but that, that's very personal. Yeah, absolutely. And so she thought about it, and she was like, you know what? I I think I'd like to do it. And I think it it gave her a little bit of power back from cancer in the mm -hmm. fact that she can now kind of tell her story of, you know, how the first week was awful. We had she had a uh, allergic reaction to the initial medicine, and it was like nurses running from all over the place trying to shoot her up with steroids because her body was was reacting to yeah. the medicine. And uh, but if telling her story could help anybody out there i think it gave her a little bit of power and she was like well yeah let's go ahead and do it so we did one episode mm -hmm. turned out i i think she not necessarily i think she enjoyed it but it was tough for her yeah absolutely and but that was the first time a lot of people who know me for the last 10 years had even seen her heard of her or anything right and then it's all of a sudden it's like oh it's the cancer show yeah. so so we've done two episodes and I, uh, it's, I think, I think it's, it's helped her out, but mm -hmm. you know, very similar to with Denise going through with her mom and then posting the video that she had posted where her mom was going through is going through Alzheimer's and recognized her when she was doing the makeup stuff, which to me, again, I, I get chills yeah. thinking about that video Aww, where she was thanks. like, that's my Denise. Yeah. Um, it's my wife and my family. I could not even bring myself to comment on the video. Like I didn't know what to say. That first off, you know, from the podcast standpoint, I just didn't want to be so like, oh, look at our podcast. We're doing all right. these amazing things. I just and it was, you know, I goes back to the word humbling. So when Denise posted that, when I watched you and your episode with Amy, um, you know, it's the same thing. It takes a lot and. Takes to your earlier point, you're putting yourself out there already. And yes. now all of a sudden, right. you know, yeah. now, you know, when you, when you're doing a podcast, you're putting your best fate, best face forward. But now it's a situation where it's like, oh, you know, not everything's perfect in my family at the moment. And now I'm super vulnerable. It's weird, but I think people respond better to that than, than if well, you're just talking about anything else. Yeah. And, and you start. Uh, so Denise, you tell me relating this to the video that you did with your mom, you start to second guess, should I be putting this out there? Oh, I for mean, sure. We know that it, it could help other people, but then in the back of your head, and, and kind of what James was saying there too, should you be doing this? Right. And I, I go back and forth. I mean, we're, I think we have one more episode to do just to catch everybody up on how all the treatments are going. Yeah. Losing her hair has been a huge thing the mm -hmm. last few weeks. That's been, it, it's been a little uh, up and down here. Yeah. But you start to second guess long-term is, is this the right thing to put out there? Yeah. Cause all, all it's going to take, right? Denise is one person I know. to tell you, mm -hmm. Yeah. You're just showing your mom to get clicks. Right. And oh, then, for sure. And then there's the burn. There's mm -hmm. the there's the comment that's going to make you stop. No matter it's if true. you're helping people. Yeah, I really was apprehensive, so I understand where you're coming from. I had that video and I had just I had only recorded it for my girls, my my three daughters because they weren't with me when I was with my mom and I hadn't seen my mom in uh in almost a year. And so uh I I talked to her on the phone all the time, but, uh, to see her and see how much she had deteriorated, aged, aged. And, uh, it was surprising. So I just wanted to record like 
a moment with my mom with for my daughters. I never planned on posting it. So it was like four months later that we did a podcast about everything going on in our lives with my mom. Cause now my mom is a big part of our lives and that has to do a lot with our traveling. And now that she lives with us. So I thought, well, this is just a glimpse into what it's like living with someone who has Alzheimer's dementia. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't until we did the podcast that I felt like I'm going to post it, but it still was very hard to hit that send button. It took me almost 24 hours to do it because I wasn't sure for the same reason, Brian, for the same reason, I didn't want anyone to feel that I was putting this out there for an exploitive purpose. And, um, but I have to say, I didn't get any trolls. I'm grateful. Like everyone, everyone was very, uh, supportive in the sense that people, I didn't know I got thousands of views and people, I didn't know were sending me private messages and then also posting on that reel. This was my mom. This was my grandma. I took care of my mom for three years. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh, this must be so hard for you. How nice that she recognized you. I mean, right. really beautiful comments. So I look, you put yourself out there on a daily and I feel like that is personal. That is hard to do. And then when you bring in the element of a family situation like yours with Amy, it's not easy. But I do have to tell you, I know everyone's on TikTok and Instagram talking about family problems. There was just something, I don't know, I guess because I felt like I knew you through social media that to see Amy on there, it was different. I, I never would have stopped for a random person. Yeah. I just wouldn't have. Like if I saw someone on Instagram and they were saying, oh, my wife has cancer or their wife was on, I don't know, Brian, if I would have taken the time to listen to a 45 minute podcast about them, but I felt like I knew you. And after listening, I, I shared it, I think on my story, or I think I took a clip and shared it. Cause I, I was like, her story is everyone's story. Like, honestly, like she is the person next door. Yeah. And, and, and so she's not some influencer. She's, you know, she's not some celebrity with this. She's the lady next door, the woman next door who has a nine to five job. I mean, my question to her was, how are you working full time and doing this? Like, I just wanted to know the basics of yeah. it. You know, like I wanted to know how, how are you as a family doing it? I was appreciative. You shared it. Hopefully you didn't get any trolls. No, but that's, that's the thing. I'm posting something like that, knowing that Denise, like you just said, I wouldn't stop and listen to that, not because I'm so cold to feelings, which I'm. A lot of people would say that I'm. I've got a heart of stone and that I don't care about anything. <laughs> right. I doubt but it. That is not what I go on social media right. for. I know it's true because we all want of an escape when we go on. There. It's an right. escape, and I don't want to sit there and listen to, and and watch somebody go through cancer, Alzheimer's, or whatever. But for people that you know, it's almost a deep dive into that person's what's behind Skip Town All Stars, what's behind Tossing Salad Podcast. I mean, it's doesn't true. it just sound ridiculous that you know we're sitting here talking about this uh, really intimate, serious conversation of your wife having cancer, my wife having cancer, on the Tossing Salad Podcast? But that for me makes sense to me because that's the whole thing that what. I want this to kind of be about it's it's about a whole bunch of other stuff that there is a little bit of a sense of humor. And even when, when we had the two episodes talking about her cancer on one, she's crying. Yeah. yeah. There's, but there's a little bit of sense of humor because you see how she and I kind of interact and oh, react. Yeah. Oh yeah. Uh huh. Two yeah. things. And For again, sure. we're just, re we're real people that you may or may not know. Or you may may or may not recognize as to you know people that are in your life, but um, you know whether or not we'll do more of that or not. I I struggle with it. I again I think we have one more episode that we should probably do just to catch people up. Yeah, I think so. As a listener, I, I can tell you, I would appreciate. I think so. It. Yeah, <laughs> but, did but you know, Amy, did whatever it, she whatever she's up to doing, yeah. obviously up for doing. All right, did Amy get Disney Plus? Uh, so. <laughs> <laughs> where we left that, so we had an argument that uh, Denise oh, yeah. started <laughs> where you, Denise, you wrote a beautiful reply to her. And, and I'll tell you, all the replies that we got for Amy off that first episode, she absolutely loved just the fact that there were there's just nice people out there that yeah. are just yeah. concerned with her as a person. Yeah. Um, 
but one of the things that Denise had mentioned in her beautiful comment to Amy was that after each round of chemo or something, or each marker that we go through, each stage that we go through, Amy should treat herself to something. A piece of jewelry, Brian. I said yeah, a piece I, of jewelry. I remember what you said, Denise. <laughs> <laughs> and so he's, Amy he's not that putting was a, it in the universe. He's not giving it energy. <laughs> Amy was Amy was like, you know, that's a great idea. Great. Who is who is this Denise person? You know, because she is. Uh, I want to be her friend. Also, she knows what she's talking about. Oh yeah, she's and a so big thinker. We had just had an argument about because I'm paring back on all the streaming services that we have. It's it's just to the point to where it's ridiculous. Uh, we're getting past the point of what you were spending on cable and all that stuff yeah. prior to cord cutting, anyways. And I'm just I'm sick of everybody. You know, we were Netflix. Amazon Prime, Hulu, Disney, yeah. ESPN, and then all those services individually. It's ridiculous. Some of them are together, like I guess uh, Hulu, Disney, and ESPN Plus. You can get us a yeah, package. You get the bundle, yeah. But still, you're you're still paying. You know, fifteen dollars here, twenty dollars there. Oh my God, yeah. uh, uh, you got to watch. The, the final season of Game of Thrones, which I know that was what ten years ago, but there are yeah. certain shows that that are must see shows, and you're like, well, the only way you can watch it is subscribing you have to, pay to HBO. For it. Yeah. So it's like, okay, uh, the month of no- November is going to be when we binge all the HBO shows because <laughs> right. I'm paying twenty two dollars for the one month, and everybody, I, oh I send gosh. out a message to all the, no. the two boys, get all your HBO stuff done in November. Um, okay. Did, did you did she get Disney? Yes or no, Brian? Did that woman get s- Disney? She got so much sympathy <laughs> from the fact that we argued that all she wanted was uh, Hulu and Disney. She didn't care about ESPN, but um, so a bunch of her mom friends from hockey <laughs> got together and gave her a gift card to to get Hulu and uh, and that's uh, awesome and uh, Disney. So she's she's up in her room breaking <laughs> during the day and she's watching her her horrible shows. I I don't even know what show. I I walk through the bedroom and I'm like I can't believe this is what we argued for so okay, you can what watch was it? really bad show. It's some it's some uh, I think it's SWAT. I think she's on this series SWAT. Oh. SWAT. <laughs> And I'm like, let Amy have me? her SWAT, okay? Let Amy have her I know. SWAT. Brian, she's going through chemo. Keep the lady sl- SWAT. It's just really long. hot guys in tight uniforms kicking ass. I, I mean, I watch trashy shows myself, but I love <laughs> giving her, you know, trouble because I'm like, this is what we, this is okay. Every, this is what it's all about. A SWAT. I was like, there's. The, you the, guys are the pop culture couple. She's upstairs watching SWAT, and you've got Katy Perry uh, collections, uh, music yeah. collections coming through the front door. Okay, yeah. so you two are the pop culture uh, couple. I know that's the the one <laughs> thing that she's kind of gotten on to me about. Although I nothing angers people online also mm-hmm. than somebody that looks like me or James. I'm gonna, James. I'm circling your face on the screen as well. You should. Uh, the, proto- the prototypical white boy, 1.0. When 0. we open our mouths and utter something about either Taylor Swift or just something that we just, it just looks like we shouldn't have any right. business. Mm. But I'm like, you know, James and I touched on this a little bit before. We did. Because uh, I think you're kind of a, I wouldn't say you're a Swifty. I'm not. But you're, you're, oh, op- you're, you're, you have nothing against her. And you actually admire the businesswoman behind yeah. Taylor being, I think you called her a, a, a badass. What did you call her? Oh, I forget. I forget. What an acoustic called. guitar. I just, something I, with an acoustic guitar. Oh, yeah. I just, I think she took her little, you know, broken down, rickety acoustic guitar and made an entire industry out of it. So. She's a billionaire now. Yeah. yeah. A billionaire. And how, whether you like pop music or her, personality i mean it just it's a fascinating story and that's how 100%. i got roped into it last yeah. year when i had a swifty on interviewing her and people are like mm. you're doing a a taylor swift interview yeah. <laughs> everybody there's so many guys that are swifties i mean look at the guy who is head of barstool sports he came out Portnoy, in a whole, yeah. 
Oh, he came out on a whole TikTok and was like, he's a legit Swifty slamming <laughs> Kim Kardashian. It was said, oh, like, yeah. do not use her music when you made her yeah. go into hiding. I was like, I love this. A 50 year old man, like, like, you know, uh, standing up for Taylor Swift. Yeah, I she love was it. Still, like, she was still a teenager yes. when she survived the whole Kanye broadside as she was winning one of the most prestigious awards that she's ever, that I, anybody will ever win in their lives. But yet Here, alone, like she was so young at the time. And it's like, Dude, why you got to It's such come a fascinating a story like and that. then you have the entire music industry now circling the wagons to prevent artists from re-recording their Oh, works. it's brilliant. Prince should have done it. I'm mm-hmm. telling you, Prince had that argument with Warner Brothers back in the day. He should have just done it and he did not. But here's what's interesting, circling back a little bit to what Kanye did to her on stage. There is no irony lost on the fact that Beyoncé showed up to her movie premiere and they took pictures together yeah. when Kanye jumped on stage to say that Beyonce should have won that award. I don't see Beyonce taking pictures with Kanye. Yeah. Well, I, mean, <laughs> I don't, I think Kanye's kind of, uh, yeah, he's kind of taking a low profile as which much he as should. he can. Yeah. Which he Smart should. Move. Smart. Yeah. But, but I, uh, I will say James, I had one other clip I was going to do from when you guys were on, uh, the podcast last month. Yeah. And this is where I'm like, I think I know Denise and James enough that they know that everything that I do, the intent is always good. And with the sense oh, of humor, yes, yes. Sure. but there was one that I, it just, it came to my mind and this is how I work is like, I'm like, Oh my God, this would be funny, but taken the wrong way. I'm like, ah, I don't think I can do it. And it was off of your clip of what you were going to call, uh, what you called Taylor Swift. I forget the word that you used, but what I was going to do is have it, have you talking about Taylor Swift uh-huh. and then cut it off right on the, on the syllable that, that started that word. Uh-huh. And then I was going to jump in on the video and be like, <laughs> When when people like us that look like us talk about Taylor Swift oh, using sure. this word, yeah. the fact that he's a dad with yeah. three daughters, the uh-huh. only male in that house, and he's able to use that word describing Taylor Swift, uh-huh. I was like, this is going to be a brilliant clip. And I I just – I lost – confidence in doing it. I was like, uh, oh, go ahead. We're all for it. No, if you want to do it, I'll post it. You're but it was going to be good. It. it was going to be good. <laughs> it was going to be great. So speaking of going to be great, yeah. let's talk about – your podcast. I want to know. So Denise and I obviously have the advantage of playing off of each other, coming up with ideas together or sort of blindsiding each other with ideas. Where do you find your inspiration? Where do you ultimately see your show going? And, uh, you know, what do you say to two years from now, Brian, that's keeping you in it? That's like an interview question. You it know, really is. is like I. So here's how I view the Tossing Salad podcast right mm-hmm. now. It may change. It has changed, and it may change tomorrow. Right now, it's it's my test kitchen for trying different things that mm-hmm. I'm I either interested it. in or that I I need to kind of sharpen my my chef knife and learn how to cut. Uh, a fillet better or how to you know cook pasta how to make uh, fresh pasta or something it's given me the ability to do different things yeah in the long run i think i am on course in wanting to do a show with somebody oh that's so a great idea i okay. am constantly looking for others that have that kind of passion mm-hmm um, I did, I'd love doing stuff by myself. Yeah. I think we talked about it before that, you know, if I have an idea, I just kind of run with it, which is good and bad. Yeah. It's a beauty but I'm of, not, yeah. Being your own host, right? Yeah. You, but I'm not having to, are you okay with this? You're not, oh, I guess we better not do this or whatever. And there's pros and cons to however you have it set up. But I, I do have, I think a lot more fun when I am going back and forth like we are now. When I did a live show with my friend Chelsea, we had a show called Brian and Chelsea Make a Podcast, mm-hmm. which is a, a play off of Brian or a, yes, a Zach and Mary Make a Porno. Uh-huh. You know? But our, our thing was uh, 24 episodes of live shows of us trying to create a podcast. So each week we were coming up with dif- different ideas 
and then enacting them and then coming back for a follow-up episode to review what we did. And I enjoyed doing stuff like that. So I think my long term, to kind of answer your question, is at some point to be on the lookout to find the next person to do some kind of show uh, down the road, whether it's a live show, a podcast, or whatever. And for me, a podcast is just the vehicle from going A to B to getting the information out there. They're all shows. Yeah. So it's not necessarily a podcast that I'm doing. I'm doing a show. Podcast is one way for me to get it out to other people. Mm -hmm. But I am looking for somebody uh, that is going to want to do this also with the passion to want to do it, the passion to want to learn how to do all the stuff that we're all learning right now, and to be to make me better in what I'm doing. So somebody so essentially not yes. somebody that I have to kind of drag along to do yeah, something. Yeah, you want with. someone who is just as excited and enthusiastic and uh what what have they have to also be the word isn't loyal. What's the word? Because you have you have to do it you have yeah, to be dedicated. consistent. Be De- dedicated. dedicated. That's it. Dedicated. And, you know, when yes. you're sagging, yeah. they have to be able to be the carry, cheerleader. You know, it's not always 50-50. Somebody's right. got to be 70-30 some days. Mm-hmm. And you guys mentioned flops. That. You guys yeah. mentioned that before to where somebody's just not uh, with enough riz, is that what they say these days, to where you're just not feeling it and the other person kind of picks it up. So I am looking, as I'm doing uh, guesting on your show, as I'm putting other content out, whether I'm I'm interviewing somebody or I'm just doing kind of a one-off topic and throwing something out there, I'm constantly learning how to do something, how to cut up the video maybe a little bit better to make me a little bit more interesting because I think I'm made more for long form content and a, and a long mm-hmm. show. I'm not made for the short clips that do well. And I think the only thing that can kind of help me with that without changing my personality, which I, I don't think I can do. It's too late. Is, well, yeah, it is. <laughs> it is. Is it's to too cut late. it up in a way that is more palatable for people on TikTok, Instagram, yeah. YouTube. I just, I'm not good at that yet, but I am learning and the the hardest thing right now is just dealing with i was looking at some of the we can't help it right we, sometimes we just look at the stats i know and the last i think week or so just in views i i don't i, I honestly don't care about likes i just i i just hope that there's a pool of people that get to see it yeah and then whatever happens happens yeah but it's like eight views 16 views and i'm like this is like is this it's on crazy. Instagram or shorts? What are you talking about? Uh, across the board. Okay. So this is uh, TikTok, Instagram, threads. I've been pushing a little bit more on threads because that's a new platform that's out there. A lot of excitement yeah. with a, a certain set of people. So I'm trying to get Tossing Salad kind of established over there. Mm-hmm. Um, but I I hope to find somebody... And it's not just one show. Like I think I could get set up and I could be efficient enough to do multiple shows mm-hmm. as long as I have the right people. Person. Yeah. Person that absolutely. I'm doing sure. it with. And that's this not really happen morph- if I'm doing it myself. Like I can't I can barely edit and do all this for, for tossing salad, which I think no matter what I decide to do, tossing salad would always be here because it's my kitchen. Yeah to where I'm doing things, but I, I'm looking forward to doing other shows. I can't tell you what those are going to be. Right. But But that's what I want to do. Okay. So that, that's the big question. Denise and I both have a big question and that is, have you spoken to Chelsea? Uh, Chelsea and I have not spoken (laughs) in, and, and it's not anything to do with like Chelsea and I, it's just, so how Chelsea and I came together, she was the sister of somebody that I was friends with within the gardening community. Right. And Star Wars was a subject, a topic that I had passion on. And my one friend was like, hey, my sister loves Star Wars. You guys should do a inter- uh, podcast on it. So I was like, oh, okay, cool. And so she was one of the, the first people I interviewed on the podcast. And we went and ranked all of the theatrical releases of Star Wars together. And this is a girl or a woman that was... I would say a, a generation behind me. So you're getting a different yeah. perspective. She grew right. up on the the prequels. 
right. where I'm an so original you, trilogy guy. Yeah. Right. So you're Gen X. She's millennial. And yeah. it's it was a great dynamic that we had, and we hit it off, and we did a few just for fun uh, live shows to where we just scrolled TikTok and made comments of people what or what they're doing on TikTok Live, which is crazy. Mm -hmm. And then I pitched her. I was like, "Hey, would you want to do this show?" And I kind of laid out some bare bones stuff, but I was like, we're essentially going to create the show as we're going. Right. And she's right. like, yeah, let's do it. Unfortunately, it was going great. And every show that we did was super fun. Mm -hmm. I don't think she was in uh, that position in her life and lifestyle to where she could commit to doing it as regular as you you guys know you have to do oh, you yeah. have to, and do you have to prep regular. for it you have to prep for it you have to pre-produce people don't realize that it's very no, time consuming. monday nights are late nights for yeah. us because yeah. we drop tuesday we have to have that episode up tuesday and morning on the audio it's really fun yeah. recording it's everything else that's work okay yeah. it's all work but people mm -hmm. don't realize that so uh, to answer james's question on have i talked to chelsea uh, because wait, let, let's cut to yeah, hold that, on that, episode 24 the last episode yeah. and you the big reveal was are you and chelsea going to continue uh with your part you know your right. partnership and continue with the podcast and ultimately you said no she said she wanted to you were like i'm not interested because my you did not say this but my take from it was she wasn't able to give it the behind the scenes work that it needed. That's just my guess because it does require work. And she has a, probably a young kid, I think she said. So yeah, she's got a younger kid. And again, she's just not, you know, I've, I've got two kids, one who's not here anymore. And another one who's a senior in high school, they can kind of, right. so there's a, a lot of time yeah. that we used to have to drive them around or go do yeah. stuff to where this is my passion now of doing it. She's just not in that stage of her life. Right. right. So, so after the, that episode aired, what happened? So, yeah. So at the end of the 24th episode, we o had always planned on that was going to be the big reveal. So yeah. uh, Brian and Chelsea make a podcast, uh, tune in to the finale. Yeah. And we I, kind I, of set it up to where it was almost like the love is blind. I don't know if you guys ever yeah, watched. I was just going to say, yeah. Reality you, dating shows. Oh, my God. There, there were a lot of love is blind references uh -huh. in that final episode. Yep. Yeah. Here I am making fun of Amy's uh, uh, TV choice of watching SWAT and I'm watching <laughs> Love is Blind. Right. But I, we had always decided that, okay, we're going to make it into kind of a Love is Blind to where we both come to the altar and then the viewers get to find out if we're going to continue with this project and if we're going to make a podcast finally and and everything. And I think a lot of people, they, they watch the show uh, they watch our live show and they're like, oh my God, they're having so much fun. This is really entertaining. Uh, mm -hmm. It was fun for us to do. And I think a lot of people just assumed that, oh yeah, we were, we were going to do it. And it was kind of a staged kind of a thing. Yeah. Um, there was a little production for that last episode, but everything, everything came from something real. And I yeah. think it kind of blurred the, if you go back and watch that, la that final episode, it, it was kind of weird because Chelsea and I knew right before we went on live, we had kind of talked that I, I, I just don't think this is going to work out, but we didn't make our final, final thing until we kind of got on the show. But I think, right. you know, she kind of explained some of the things that she was going through. And I was like, I, I just don't, uh, we've, we've got to be doing on the same regular page. consistent yeah. on the same page. Yeah. And then I said, okay, let's save all of this and let's do the live and then let's bring on one of a, a, like a guest co-host who, who yeah. we had interviewed from earlier in the season, bring her back. And she was the moderator, basically. She was the moderator. Mm -hmm. And a little bit was one of the shows we never really got to get into that I wanted to do was an improv show to where we would have uh, people – uh, that were watching our live give us situations that she and I would would uh, recreate or improv okay. and have fun right. with it. Yeah. I thought that was mm -hmm. a, gr a great idea for a show. We never really got to to do that. And I said, why don't we make that last episode kind of like an improv show also? Because it, it kind of is, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I think the only kind of production improv putting on was kind of heightening up the tension a bit on some of the things we talked about, but everything we talked about was kind of real. 
Uh huh. Mm-hmm. And um, I mean, sure it's- enough, halfway through the episode, at least on my end, I, I mean, I was feeling kind of sick to my stomach because I- it's. You're watching two people essentially break up. Yeah, I said. Yeah. I said. I think Brian's going to break up with her. Yeah. I mean, like when I was watching it, I, I, I don't know if you remember, but I, I watched. I think the next day after it went live, it came up on, on a reel. Maybe you posted. I saw it somewhere, and I was like, "Was this for real? Like he just broke up with her?" And I didn't know you well enough. We right. had just started following each other, and then I was telling James the other day. I said, "Oh my gosh!" I said because I wanted him to see it. I'm like, "This is like he broke up with her on live TV." Yeah. I was like, I mean, "Oh my god!" The gosh. beauty of the episode is as it goes on. Uh, you you mentioned that you know there was a little bit of tension, but it was really real. I would say it was really tense and really real by the end. <laughs> and uh, uh-huh. Uh, but I wasn't convinced you were going to say, you know what? You have your thing. I have mine. It's better off. We don't do this because I just felt like at any point, like Chelsea's obviously engaging enough where if she said that one magical sentence to you, you would have been like, okay, I'm good. Let's do this. You know? And so I thought maybe I thought that's where the hook was coming. Like I I was like, it's going to happen. It's going to happen. And then when it didn't, it did not, you know, obviously, um, it was palpable all around on in all three squares of the podcast. Yep. Uh, it was, you know. it was, it was more of a mutual decision for sure than it was uh, with some people that maybe were thinking that it was me yeah, not wanting to. And she did want to, I, I don't know if there was anything that either one of us would have said or come up with to where we knew it was going to work out. And that's the the great thing about dealing with, you know, somebody like myself or with Chelsea is we're going to tell you, we're not going to do something that we're not really into. And so she was very clear. um, I think in that, when we made that kind of decision that I don't think this is going to work out. And so we're like, well, let's, this is how we're going to produce that last show. Right. And then at the very end, I'm a huge Sopranos fan. I made a Sopranos thing earlier on. And I said mm-hmm. at the very end, and I'm, I don't even remember how I hinted to her because I I honestly, I was worried about, I, I didn't want any hurt feelings either. Yeah. Yeah. But at the end of the episode, which I have, all I've done is edit through it a little bit. But the final part was I was getting ready to say something to her and then and I, this- I went, it went black. Yes, yeah. and that yes. was our homage to the Sopranos, uh-huh. and so all of our friends that knew us that had been following the show, <laughs> they all DM'd her. Not one of them DM me. <laughs> oh, shoot. that's terrible. And they're like, "Are you okay?" <laughs> and so she's like, "I need to tell them that we kind of knew." And when I say that, yes, we knew we weren't going to do the show, but that really unfolded pretty real. It did. And I think one of the reasons is you got to go first and whether or not she was intending on carrying through with it or not, you know, it always stings a little bit yeah, when they break up with sting. you before you have a chance to break up with them. For That's sure. just how it is. So there you go. There's the insight to how I think and how to create shows and what I'm <laughs> trying to do. And I mean, it really is. Uh, it's all in good fun, sense mm. of humor. I do try to be as real as I can. Um, but I, there's a little pageantry sometimes, I guess. Um, but it's always from a a creative spark. And this is why I think we're all kind of doing what we're doing, even at our Mm -hmm. age to where people, again, they're like, why, uh, why, why not? Why not? Why not? not? Exactly. Real quick question. Did Chelsea start her own podcast? Uh, no, she's, (laughs) so her job. And I, I, I'm not going to give away too much of what she does, but she does some things uh, with content also. So when we decided to do the show, my thing to her also was I, I want you to learn how to do things so you can take from our show to go apply it to what you do for your career. Mm-hmm. Sure. And so she used some of the stuff like staging of her. You know, we we created a studio for her in one episode and um, talked about the camera, the lighting and stuff. And so this was all stuff that helped she her. applied. Yeah, it helped her and applied to what she does so um yeah so she did not start another podcast although she has she had a podcast prior to us but it was kind of through her work that she okay. does so okay. she owns her own company okay um so all right so I, you continued 
Chelsea Chelsea's is doing just fine. Chelsea's She's doing just, just fine. That's and good news. She and I are fine. Who are worried about her? We just we, we just don't communicate very often because we socially we're I mean we're just we knew of each other, but it was the podcast that brought us together. Got yeah. it. Well, in fairness, uh, we didn't DM you either after it was over. We did DM <laughs> Chelsea. We <so>. did. <laughs> James, James really was concerned about Chelsea. I was. So yeah, she was, was crying on sure. his shoulder. But it's good to know she's all right. Her I g- family's I gave doing her, well and her career is blossoming. I gave her trouble. I'm like, every single one of our friends that knew, I was like, they all DM'd her. She's like, I've got to tell them like, we're okay. And I'm like, you can tell them wherever you want. I was like, I'm not going to tell them anything because that... What we put out there is is what it was. Yeah. Right. That's awesome. All right. Well, uh, I think we should probably wrap this up. Uh, we cannot thank you enough for coming on today and reaching out to us in the very beginning and forming yes. a friendship with us, having us on your show. It's been a fantastic relationship thus far. We're going to have to do periodic check-ins. Oh, I for think. sure. Yeah. We're definitely doing periodic check-ins, Brian. And hey, whenever you got a troll, you tell them just reply and say, I'm 10%. I'm 10% <laughs> podcast right. We're worldwide. We're number 10, baby. Uh-huh. <laughs> well, I, I appreciate you guys having me on here. Um, I, I'm, I, I consider you guys friends now. Absolutely. Um, just, I just can't I, invite you over for dinner because you won't come. Uh, yeah. it, it 50-50. <laughs> kind of depend on how I'm kind of, you know, feeling or whatever. But uh, okay, I, you know, if Brian gets up to go to the bathroom more than three times, he wants to get the hell out of here. Oh, yeah, for sure. <laughs> yeah, it's not because I have stomach problems. I've had that before to where somebody asked my wife, she's like, Brian's been to the bathroom 30 times since we've been here. Is he okay? Yeah. She, Amy's like, no, he just wants you to leave. Have you and not gotten yeah, that? Yeah. He just wants you to leave. And I'm sitting yeah. on the on the toilet just, you know, playing on the phones. I'm like, I, I don't want uh-huh. to go back out there. Don't worry, um, Brian. We'll go to Chelsea's house. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I I find that we have a lot of things in common, not only because, you know, lifestyle with, you know, our kids being gone mm-hmm. and it's just whole this whole new thing of, okay, well, it what is. are we going to kind of do this next stage? You guys are both creative. You guys are great together. Thank um, you. Thank I just, you. I feel like it, the struggle of, of starting up something like your podcast and your show, I can relate to that. And that's initially why I think that we... Uh, came together at the beginning because it was yes. a more of a instead of a fan to a show i think we were looking for other creators doing the same thing so that we can compare yes. and help each other it's out very helpful yeah it's very helpful yes that's the that's the tough thing is finding others not necessarily with the gatekeeping but just other people that the intent is just to be helpful and just kind of understand what you're we- doing and going through Yeah. And I think that Brian, honestly, we should do another episode about what you just touched on the gatekeeping, because there's so much information that people could share and they don't. And James and I are really happy to share ours. You obviously are always happy to share yours, but darn, honestly, if people aren't like, eh, I'm not willing to tell you. And I'm like, why? Like, it doesn't make any sense. So really it'd be so much fun to do another episode just about all the things that we have learned along the way and all the things you've learned along the way. Yeah. And I, I will say I'm again, I I'm going into this podcast, I was like, there was a point in the interview for you guys last month. And I think it was Denise that had mentioned something about James. And I, I caught this when I was when I was editing through on the on the first take. Uh something about what James did for work. And something about daytime Emmy or something. And I remember in my head, and I know you'll you'll edit all this that stuff out and you get as far as the <laughs> cursing or whatever. Yeah, you know, I was trying oh, to yeah, be yeah. good on your on your show. Oh yeah, yeah, no. But in my head, I was like, what the f- did she just say that he did? But I, <laughs> I remember thinking and remembering what was going through my head, and I was wanting to follow up on that because I'm like, wait a minute, what? What does James do? Oh, you don't and know what he never, does? We never got back to it. Oh, we never got back to it? And then I think there was a, a couple follow-ups later because we got on to something else. You know, yeah. we, we start yeah. talking about I stuff know. and we go wherever. <laughs> and then there was some point when we were kind of talking back and forth in the DMs or something. And we were about ready to, I think I was about ready to ask again. And we got sidetracked. <laughs> and so going into this episode, I was like, you know what? Damn it. I am going to ask. <laughs> <laughs> what the hell does James do? And I was like pissed at myself because I was, 
I was like, how does a host miss that? Because you, when you said something about daytime Emmy or something, you can I, see in my on my face it registered a little bit, but you saw yeah. the point to where I'm like, what? I think we okay. <laughs> but I so never followed up. For the record, I have no Emmys. Oh, you've been nominated I, I'm, though. So I'm stop a total it. whore when it comes to money. So I've always chased the dollar rather than the accolades. But you've been nominated. Um, I've been nominated once for Project Runway, but uh, to your, I have friends who work on your favorite show, Love Is Blind, and uh, I, I, I've worked in unscripted, the dirty word being reality television, for about twenty years now. So as an editor, so when and you a were producer, talking earlier, you worked as a about, what does that mean? Well, okay, so they shoot. They either go to the stage or out in the field or whatever the show is. They go and shoot everything, and then they just bring it back to you know the yeah. office or the studio and they ingest it all they get it all you know on a server for us and we just start editing that those hours and hours of footage compiling it down to a 42 minute show right so he makes uh, the show basically yeah music effects interview but where does the interview bike go it doesn't go here it goes there so that kind of stuff uh story uh everything from the graphics to you know, fix the, the fixing the font size. So uh, everything from beginning to end, I and people like me touch it. And then we go through rounds and rounds of notes and serve a lot of masters. And finally, at the end of the day, you have an edited show. So there you go. That's what I do. I, I still feel like it's just this cloud of stuff. That I'm like, I've got so many questions, which I, I don't know. At some point, can there be an episode to where we just we should. Oh, because that'd be fun. I, you, I don't know if people you always ask. Not. You can I don't know if he's if you're worked, like, eh, I, I can. don't know if I can say about this or I that. Mean, or... I mean, 90% of the shows I've worked on have been canceled. So yeah, I'm totally fine. That is not it. true because he's <laughs> no, worked on. I'm just saying so percentage. You, some have lasted longer than others. Yeah, but yeah, every show on, gets canceled. It's just a matter of when. So, you well, know. Okay. But he's worked on big shows. Like I have. The Masked yeah. Singer, uh, Big the Brother. Still going. So you think you can dance. Yeah, uh, I else? did 14 Project seasons Runway. of America's Next Top Model. So that was my bread and butter for the longest time. So from the mid 2000s until like what? I know, but you've like actually sat with Tyra. We've been to parties where she's invited the cast and crew. I mean, he's not going to say all stuff like that, but which is crazy because he's he's worked with some of the best people in the business. I, mean, I have actually, and he's, yeah. I've and he's one really of the best, but he's never going to say it. He's literally one I'll of the best. I will never say that either. No. All right. Well, we really appreciate all the time you've given us, obviously, on your show. Can't thank you enough for being a guest today on ours. Brian from the Tossing Salad podcast. James, Denise, thank you guys for having me on. I had a blast as usual. And uh, let me know when we're getting together. But uh, if you come to St. Louis, 50-50 uh, if I'll... <laughs> I'll come out and meet you. I don't know. <laughs> if I'll actually show up. I sense a lot of bathroom trips in our future. <laughs> Absolutely. All yeah. right, Brian. Thank you so much. Yeah. All right. Let's take them out. Empty nest, full tank. See you guys next week. Check the mic and make sure it sound right, boys.